Hello, so I bought this machine about two years ago. So it's currently March 24 now. And it originally had the Yasnet control and I refurb all the electronics, but it couldn't keep up with one G-code and it was just, the G-code was kind of weird. Um, I had to modify a post processor to make it work for this machine. But anyway, I decided to update the control. So I'm just going to run program quickly just to show you the machine working and then I'll explain about the machine. So this particular job I do on the lathe, but the lathe's already booked up. So I'll do it on the mill instead. It's not the fastest, but... Pretty much it, making these parts. So most of the machine is hydraulic, and the great thing with this machine is it has a two-speed gearbox. So the low speed will do zero to a thousand or eleven hundred RPM, and the top speed will do six thousand. And that's changed hydraulically. And you'll notice when it comes to change tool, there's the supposition. And that is a cam inside that hydraulic plunger pushes into the cam and then aligns it. Everything about this is hydraulic. But it works great. This is the control I got. Came from China. I did a lot of research and so far this has just been amazing. Um, like parameters, you can, there's just a million parameters to set everything on the machine. Uh, you can just keep going with that. I ripped my own macro for the tool change. There is one that came on it, but I rewrote it because I used some slightly different relays on the, the PLC. Reused the original control case. So it's just like any other CNC. The nice thing is comes with really long cables and every single one is nicely labeled so this is the electrical cabinet the original with two big large cabinets on the back so now I've just got this one K 
kept with the DC servos. So I got these um, transformers that step 208 down to about 90 volt. Then it goes through a bridge rectifier, which then gets it to about 130, 140 volt DC to these big capacitors. Some resistors, bleed resistors, so when you power it off, these will drain pretty fast. Um, actually, these drain in like less than a minute because I've used quite big resistors. A few more resistors on the back. These two for the dynamic braking on the spindle. And then this resistor is a charging resistor for the capacitors. So you don't want to just turn this on because you'll blow a fuse. So this resistor charges them for a couple of seconds. And then this timer controls this contactor, which then switches the full power on. Reuse the control transformer. That's 110 volt for the solenoid valves for the hydraulic system. Then this is the relay board for the control I got. So this controls all the, the solenoids for the tool changer, but also these wires here are the proximity switches. So if there's a mishap with the tool change, it knows if it's missed a spot, where it needs to index to, those kind of things. And then these are the servo drives, so these are DC. As I say, I kept with the original servos. The only difference is I replaced the encoders for modern ones. The original ones were kind of like a glass disc, and they also had a dynamometer on the end, like a little DC generator, which indicated the, the motor speed. But this is just a plain old encoder now, and it's a sealed unit so it doesn't get contaminated. And it's also 5 volt, whereas the original was 12. Um, which goes straight to this. This is a closed loop feedback system. The original one, um, the servo drives were controlled by a voltage, and then the encoders went to the control, which then looped back to the drives which is just a really old way of doing it and it had a, a few issues now these I got from back drives they're probably the easiest drives I've ever tuned literally from wiring them up to downloading the software well downloading the software and programming them and getting them running it took 30 minutes it was really easy, they run great the only issue is they're only 20 amps um, and they rate 160 volt, so I get the speed, I just don't get enough torque. And the lead screws on this machine are really coarse, so you really need plenty of current. So really this machine isn't great for roughing. It does many other things, but roughing and big passes is, is terrible. So that's something, in the future I'll either change, I'll either replace the motors for AC servos or maybe even just change out the ball screws for finer pitch ones. Um, the Z-axis ball screw is really worn on this machine so that's probably the main option. Um, spindle drive is just a regular VFD. Uh, it runs 0 to 10 volt. That's absolutely perfect. Um, this control will also take a, an encoder, which I haven't wired up yet. It's still got the original one, which is this wire, uh, which is 12 volts. So I've got to remove the original and put a 5 volt one in. But apart from that, the machine just works great. Um, the electrics are great. You'll notice the great thing with these drivers, every single one of the wires was labeled so it was really easy to do. Uh, this little board here is just an add an extra. The original person wired the power backwards, which, I don't know if you can see the, the lubricator pump. So it turned the motor the wrong way and broke all the gears in the pump. So I 3D printed something and a DCU actuator just to kind of actuate the lubricator pump. 
Um, one thing I don't run is coolant. The guy before me had the, the spindle reground a new bearings in, but he assembled it and I'm not saying I don't trust his work, but there's been a few other bits that he messed up on. Like the oil lines were all disconnected and the gib strip for this side of the casting the screws must have been loose and they've chewed into the casting and made quite a mess of it so sometimes when it gets quite low down the head you can hear a bit of a scrape but because of that it's also worn the z-axis ball screw out by about two and a half thou so i'll see if it does it now i'm going to put it in manual mode just make sure I don't break my tab. So if I move down pretty far. Uh, so it's not doing it now, but you get a bit of resonance because there's so much slop in the z-axis and i've programmed out the backlash yeah it's not not gonna do it but it's not the best you can sometimes hear when this thing's drilling it's clunking and that's the ball screw slop um so that really wants replacing i mean i've taken it out in the software and it does a really good job of that and then as for the x and y they're about half a thou backlash, which then I've taken out in software. So it's pretty much perfect, the accuracy. Uh, what else? Replaced all the conduits. I went with this stuff, it's called liquid conduit. And it's basically just a metal inner with a plastic outer and it, it's just sealed. But just cleaned up all the original stuff, did a better job. All the cables inside are all ground and earth, like they should be. Um, they come through the top here, so there's all this, this grounding cable uh, sheath, which grounds it properly. So not once has this machine ever done anything stupid. which is a bonus, that's why I really like this control. My other machine, which I don't use too much now because it doesn't have a tool changer, I've had originally had a Mac 4 control. It originally had a Centroid M400 that was professionally re retrofitted by someone else before I bought the machine. Uh, that failed, it used to do weird things. So I got Mac 4, I went with the original DC motors had issues with the drives Repe replaced all that for ac and then always had some issues with mark 4 or the software and the smooth stepper and i just recently upgraded to centroid acorn and to be honest it's probably even worse than the mark 4 just some weird things so I, I still wouldn't recommend that so I'm just going to redo all the whole control again, get rid of all these loose wires, put an electrical cabinet back on, and I'm going to go with another one of these controls. So I should get that in a few days, and then I'll have a reliable machine again. But yeah, if you've got an old 80s CNC, you can have it running just like a modern CNC. Well, thanks for watching. I, I did this video because a lot of people have asked about it, so that's what I went with in the end. It's worked out really good. I can't fault it. PC-based controls are just garbage, not a way to go. Um, apart from that, I got lots more projects on the way. I'm gonna start doing the YouTube thing again, so catch you next time. Thanks.